though a number of countries, as you've mentioned, have made a unverified claims about testing hypersonic weapons, Russia, China, and the U.S. are the only ones known to be developing them. And our Leland Vitter is joining us right now to keep this conversation alive. We're still waiting on confirmation if this uh, was true, if Russia did actually use a hypersonic missile. What would it mean if it were legit? Well, conceivably, if it works and was used in combat, it would be the first time that we've known about a hypersonic missile being used in combat. Lloyd Austin, the defense secretary, yesterday said he didn't have a reason to dispute the Russians' claims, which would be a tacit acceptance of it. And there's been some reporting that the U.S., uh, with its surveillance systems that were flying over Poland at the time, were able to track the Russian missile that had been fired from the Russian uh, side of this conflict. Uh, flip this around the other way, uh, while it sounds really sort of sexy and important that it, this was used, it may also show that Russia is starting to run out of its precision guided munitions. Those are the cruise missiles that can travel over a long period of uh, long distance and hit a certain target like the, this ammunition dump that must be hit with real precision. The other thing it shows is the fact that the Russians are loath to send either their bombers or their fighters all the way into Western Ukraine because of the Ukrainian air defense system. So uh, yeah, it does sound pretty interesting if the Russians have this technology, we're willing to use it and it worked. On the other hand, and the defense secretary pointed this out, uh, it speaks to some of the problems the Russians are having uh, that they're willing to use this technology and let the world see it and let the United States' surveillance and radars and air defense systems and that Patriot battery that's sitting in Poland track it. But, you know, the U.S. actually hopes to be in its own testing phase uh, for one of these missiles by the end of the sure. year, we're being told. How feasible is that? How significant would it be that we would have our own hypersonic technology, not that they would use it in Ukraine? Well, I guess the flip side is, is how significant it is that the Russians and the Chinese conceivably have technology that we don't right now mm -hmm. uh, and have been ahead on this issue. The other part uh, of this for the United States is, is it's pretty it's always been questionable uh, what the U.S. has and what it doesn't. You'll remember the F-117 stealth fighter, the B-2 stealth bomber. Uh, that was technology that existed for almost a decade. And we, the American public, never knew about it. Uh, so what toys uh, either the Air Force or the Navy has uh, to use that we don't know about is still pretty significant, probably, um, although it's been publicly reported that we don't have hypersonic missile technology yet. Uh, typically, these are used as conventional weapons in the way the Russians use them uh, against Ukraine over the past uh, couple of days. There's now reports that there was a second one of these strikes made. But uh, again, if the United States doesn't have it, that probably says more about the U.S. than it does about Russia and China. Good point. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I know a delegation of U.S. lawmakers visiting Poland mm -hmm. over the weekend. They want to provide Ukrainians with more weaponry. Obviously, we're in this for the long haul. But if, if a nation like Russia or even China, who allows Russia to use their technology, uh, would have something hypersonic, how in the world would Ukraine be able to defend themselves against something like that? It's a great question. Probably the answer is not very well at all or if at all. And one of the problems with the hypersonic missiles is not only do they travel so fast you can't shoot them down, they travel so fast, about a mile per second, uh, wow. that you don't have enough time to get out of the way, so to speak. So the early warning systems don't provide enough warning to be able to figure out where they're going and then provide that warning to the town. Um, two separate issues. I've talked to some of the congressmen who are on that trip over uh, throughout the NATO countries, uh, and they talk about how desperate the Ukrainians are for more weapons and the like. Uh, in the end, it's up to the White House. Uh, and the White House has been pretty clear that their overarching principle is they do not want to provide weapons that would provoke Vladimir Putin. So there you go. And no-fly zone is, uh, there's no deal on a no-fly zone. Uh, Leland, thank you, as always. Uh, we appreciate you. And you can watch On Balance with Leland Vitter every weeknight on News Nation, 7 Eastern, 6 Central Time. Still Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.